will continue with Calabash community in just a few moments. Here now is the CTV News Brief. I am Natalie Jolifanis. A major press conference took place today on the state of the economy. It involved minister in the Ministry of Finance, Ubaldus Raymond, and an official of the Caribbean Development Bank. Dr. Raymond says this was part of a government consultation on a comprehensive economic agenda for St. Lucia. First, he spoke on the five to stay alive, promises made by the United Workers' Party when it campaigned for office. He said there was some progress to report. Namely, the reduction in the increase of the vehicle license fees and the increase in the school transportation and school feeding programs. The amnesty on personal property tax will commence in January 2017 and the reduction in value added tax will, announced, will be announced in October of this year. I must stress that Five to Stay Alive, although expected to be effective, is part of our comprehensive restructuring of this tax system, which is the purpose of this broad, detailed consultation. Dr. Raymond said the economic plan for St. Lucia is centered around three major policy directions. One, reducing cost of living. Two, spurring economic growth. And three, curtailing on the high level of debt. The government's aim is to ensure that we do not place undue burden on public finances and that we address our current debt situation. The CDB report is a guide on the path to achieving those goals. The Minister of Finance says whilst there were improvements in the fiscal performance, certain adjustments were needed as public finances were on an unsustainable path. The report states in the last decade the last decade average growth in the, in the economy of St. Lucia was 0.9%. Over the last five years, the performance of St. Lucia's economy has been generally weak, with real outputs averaging negative 0.4%. Provisional estimates for 2015 show growth of 1.2%, and preliminary forecasts for 2016 indicate growth of approximately 1.1%. The CDB also utilized various scenarios in order to weigh the effects of tax adjustments on the economy. In the, con in the conclusion of the report, the CDB also notes that the initial assessment of the fiscal situation shows that there is tremendous scope for improvement. With respect to the debt situation, the report warns that risks abound and the high concentration or with the high concentration of short-term debt. The representative from the Caribbean Development Bank was Dr. Justin Ram. He said St. Lucia and the Caribbean were characterized by low growth and high and growing indebtedness. He says what is happening in St. Lucia is not unique. The Caribbean has not been performing well. Dr. Ram revealed that there are deeper structural issues in the Caribbean. The dotted line there shows the Caribbean Development Bank's borrowing member countries. And from what you can see there, against other comparator regions, Caribbean countries have not been performing very well. And so it is very important for us to make this point that St. Lucia, being part of this, of this grouping, uh, is also a reflection of deeper structural issues that we find in most Caribbean economies at this point in time. The chart on the right shows the debt to GDP ratio of some of our borrowing member countries at the end of 2015. And as you can see here, uh, the Caribbean has some of the most highly indebted nations in the world. At this point in time, uh, at, the end of, at the end of 2015, the debt to GDP ratio in St. Lucia as we had estimated, was around 75% of gross domestic product. There is a high average cost of borrowing of 6% compared to growth of less than 1%. Dr. Ram cautions that there are not enough resources to manage debt levels. St. Lucia's debt to GDP ratio stands at 75% and trending upwards. Dr. Ram says this is not good. Now we should emphasize here that generally we say that 
If your debt to GDP ratio is in excess of 60% of gross domestic product, uh, we do believe that that is trending towards an unsustainable uh, debt trajectory. So overall, the result uh, in St. Lucia over the last few years has been a considerable buildup in the debt stock. So that if we project these numbers going forward, and uh, this is to say if there's a business as usual scenario, if there, is, if there are no mitigating measures put in place, then we see the debt to GDP ratio in St. Lucia by 2030 rising well above 110% of gross domestic product. And we think that once uh, the debt to GDP ratio attains such levels, it becomes even much more difficult for any government to bring the fiscal accounts into some level of equilibrium. Dr. Ram says St. Lucia must take a critical look at fiscal consolidation if it is to ever get its economy back on track. This will, in, this will involve looking at revenue reforms that improve efficiency and collections, public financial management reforms that improve planning and budget managing, management, as well as structural reforms to improve competitiveness and increase growth. And there should also be a focus on transformative infrastructure projects, along with strategic liability management aimed at containing the cost of debt. Like I mentioned before, the effective interest rate currently on St. Lucian debt is around 6%, and which is quite high for any government to maintain. And so we really need to look at some mechanism that can bring that cost of debt down over the short to medium term. The report provided by the CDB and the ECCB will be used along with other reports in determining the rate of reduction of the value added tax. An announcement is expected at the end of October. Meanwhile, the leader of the St. Lucia Labour Party, Philip J. Pierce, says the United Workers' Party government must level with St. Lucians about the promised reduction and eventual elimination of the value-added tax VAT. We said that the plan was unrealistic. We made that point many times, that you could not reduce VAT in 100 days. You could not do it. The, the UDAP must do, must speak the truth, must be honest to the people of St. Lucia and say to them, Listen, we said so to win the elections. We cannot do it. Let's go back to the joint board and see how we can benefit the people of St. Lucia. The opposition leader has cautioned Prime Minister Alan Chastney about taking all expense paid trips by foreign investors with deep pockets looking to do business in St. Lucia. He says this is not a practice head of state should engage in. It's dangerous for the Prime Minister to travel and people pay for his expenses. That may have all sorts of ramifications for the country. What a, and I have no issues with the Prime Minister traveling. The Prime Minister must travel, the Prime Minister must travel, and he must represent the state. But, but what I'm saying is the Prime Minister's travel must be more targeted, it must be more purposeful, and he, he also can make use of the technology that's available. The Prime Minister ought to appoint ministers that are responsible and who can, who can do the business of government. The Prime Minister is the chief executive. He, he can't have, and, and in fact, the Prime Minister must be the last resort. He cannot be the first resort because if something goes wrong, then who, who will come in and, and arbitrate? So the Prime Minister should allow his ministers to do the, give his ministers instructions and then go for, and then after follow up. But, but he being first can also have some serious problems for himself and for the country. Mr. Peer again repeated charges of victimization by the UWP administration. He says the level of victimization within the first 100 days in office has been intense. The UWP in its first 100 days has shown that it is the most vindictive UWP administration ever with numerous firing of workers and professionals in the most undignified manner. The SAP believes that every St. Lucia deserves the right to work, regardless of political orientation, but, but must be treated with dignity and respect. 
The recent attacks on the Attorney General by the Prime Minister and his ministers and on the OES Ambassador, both women, were, were uncalled for and unnecessary. In other news, training of volunteers at Victoria Hospital is continuing as the hospital seeks to improve the quality of service being offered to the public. We have details in this report. The management of Victoria Hospital is using volunteerism to address some human resource deficiencies and to prepare for transitioning to the Owen King EU Hospital through the training of volunteers. A training program for six young men and women was held Monday at the Victoria Hospital to assist these volunteers in effectively discharging their duties in the various departments of the hospital. The volunteers who have made a commitment to serve on a regular basis will acquire knowledge and skills in delivering health care services. Ms. Elena Plummer is the Human Resource Manager at Victoria Hospital. We want to try to develop, whilst they are with us, the whole person. So we're looking at areas like professionalism and work ethic. So you would have noticed that Mr. Weeks, who is a facilitator for the morning session, did a, a little segment on professionalism with them. He would have also spoken to them a bit about volunteerism in general. What is volunteerism and how it can benefit them as well as the organization who's receiving the volunteers. He's doing with them right now extraordinary productivity because we would like to think when the persons have left here they're going to go on and perform extraordinarily you know not just ordinary average persons but we want to groom them and develop them in their personal and professional lives aspiring medical student stacy gilbert sees this as an avenue for her professional and personal development all these things help make you a better person they teach you how to be more reliable um, more integral, uh, more disciplined, and which employer does not like <laughs> an employee who is reliable, disciplined, and um, has a level head. So we're learning a lot of new skills, um, not only in the medical field, but personal skills and interpersonal skills as well. The volunteer training program will also create more opportunities for participants to find employment in the health and other sectors of the society. Reporting from the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Michael Gasper. A benefit concert has been organized in support of Calypsonian Get Through, one of the founding members of the Takeover Tent. That concert will take place on October 12th. It has been branded Chanting for Get Through, named after one of his more popular compositions. A real Calypso Solia, one of the pioneers of Calypso in St. Lucia. Get Through, as he is more popularly known, has been afflicted with an ailment and needs urgent assistance. I was made aware of that situation by a member of our committee on, and found out at the time that one or two persons had already begun dialogue with regards to what we could possibly do to assist our good friend get through. To make a long story short, a committee has been formed and the extent to which the discussion has taken place is beyond just assistance to our good brother get through, but also is the establishment of a welfare fund to assist persons in the industry. Get through's health problem, we realize that we as a tent could never ever just sit back and allow, to, allow him to just find himself in a position whereby he could not have aided himself. So of course with the brainchild of our founding member, that is Tress Scott Augustine, we found ourselves in the position where we had no other choice but, of course, to rally. And, of course, we will realize that the committee has expanded itself in terms of persons who really love the art form, persons who understood what Get Through has done. And it is indeed a, a pleasure that we are having to ensure that we have this benefit show. And it is nice that it is out of this activity that we are evolving into the welfare fund. And certainly the circumstances, as so often happens, made us persons aware of the need to fill a number of objectives. One, the assistance indeed to an absolute pioneer. While Get Through might not be the virtuoso artist and performer on stage, but certainly his role as a performer, yes, this is legendary tune, what the people chanting as way back as 1982. But also, he's more renowned for his skills as an organizer, a pioneer, when 
the words like sponsorship were alien to the art form when it was really difficult and challenging and persons snubbed Calypso at that time. He brought in a new wave where he encouraged young persons, particularly from the inner city and the urban center in St. Lucia, to come into the field of Calypso. The protest Calypso, the Rastafarians, for example, who had not come near the Calypso art form and were more comfortable and more sanguine about the reggae art form, suddenly found a, an opening, an avenue to be brought into the Calypso fold. That remains very significant, and there is no need to list the countless number of artists of that persuasion who have come through and have been outstanding. The very presence here of Hope Black today bears testimony to that. We're looking forward to October the 12th. It is a Wednesday, and circumstances force that, but the, the, the fraternity very confident that they will, in fact, get a very good turnout. The response has been tremendous. There will be an after-work line, and then into the full-fledged concert. The fact that people like the festival band, the music and sound providers, have all declared their interest and agreed to perform for free. All performances, starting with the festival band, we must commend them, and all the artists have agreed to perform absolutely free. And finally, St. Lucians got a chance to experience Japanese culture when a special festival was held at the Castries Town Hall. It featured Japanese culture, food, martial arts, and music. My name is Nozomi Imoto. We are holding Japan Festival 2016, but there are two purposes mainly. One, to introduce Japan through Japanese culture such as dance and music. Two, to promote a mutual understanding and a friendship between Japan and St. Lucia through a cultural display. At the venue City Hall, there are many activities today. For example, there are karate demonstration, music performances, um, Japan quiz, traditional dance, and the competition. The members of the St. Lucia Shulukan Karate Association are very pleased to be part of this um, festival today because the art that we are studying, which is karate, is, is of Japanese origin. And actually, the system that we are doing has direct Japanese lineage. So we are very proud to be part of this activity this afternoon. My name is Steffi Smith and I'm here to participate in the Japanese um, Cultural Festival. I'm excited to be here. It's nice to have locals experiencing Japanese culture without having to travel across the world. The fact that they brought many different um, parts of the culture like this Yakumoto and the tea and traditional games, chopsticks, is very exciting. It gives us a chance to enjoy the culture. I'm very excited to be here and my favorite part will be the chopsticks challenge because I love using chopsticks and I look forward to winning a prize. On that note, we conclude the CTV News Brief for this evening. We will return shortly to Calabash Community with Bernard Fannis. Stay tuned. I am Natalie Jolie Fannis. Winwood and Leeward Brewery Limited presents the 9th Annual Oktoberfest and We All on Sunday, October 2nd at the Promenade in Beau from 2 p.m. Come enjoy a wide range of international and local beers while you savor delicious Creole cuisine and take in the best in Creole entertainment. Featuring DYB, Avot Service, The Secret Band, Ronald Buhingson, and many more, including headliner Bogey Bear. Bogey Bear, Bogey Bear from Martinique. Tickets cost $30 in advance, you pay more at the door. It's Oktoberfest and Quayor. Come, sample a world of beer, great Creole food and music. Sunday, October 2nd at the Promenade in Beau Anu Ale must be 18 and older to enter. Anyone knows where we can get money to pay for daddy's hospital bill? Don't worry, Granny. Just fix it. You know, we too are trying to get money for repairs and renovations, but we just don't know where. Daddy, just fix it. Honey, nothing's broken. We're just looking for a place to get money at a reasonable rate. I know, Mommy, and that's what I'm saying. Just fix it. At Fix, we provide a wide range of affordable loan facilities that are tailored to fit the needs of everyone. From personal loans to equity financing, whatever your needs, we can fix it. Fix, a company you can trust. 
It's made from natural cranberry extract and premium purified water. Its small size makes it easy to pack or grab and go. It makes drinking water much more desirable for kids. And it's produced right here in St. Lucia. What exactly are we talking about? Introducing the new and refreshing Crystal Clear Cran Water. The perfect blend of water and cranberry to give you a healthy and enjoyable drinking experience. Add some flavor to life with the all-new Crystal Clear Cran Water in stores now.